You are listening to Detroit Craft Academy, episode number 10. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Detroit Craft Academy. I am your host, Jody Lynn, and this is episode number 10. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm having a pizza breakfast morning, which I really highly enjoy. And I was thinking this morning, as I was going to go eat my morning pizza, that I love when you get pizza because your whole house smells like pizza. And then I thought, oh my God, somebody needs to make a pizza scented candle. Because I don't think anyone makes that. So, who makes candles out there? Somebody make a pizza flavored candle. Um, put that in your thought catalog. So, I can't believe how much stuff can happen in one week. Um, since one week ago, uh, I bought a new car because my battery in my other car died and I didn't want to spend any more money. So, I just, impulse decision, bought a new car. So, that's pretty sweet. I started doing chalkboard art this week, which is something new to my things. You can check out the sweet-ass chalkboard thing that I did for Sister Pie over on my Instagram feed at Jody underscore Lynn underscore doodles if you want to check that out. I've been really into vintage wrestling posters lately, and uh, I put together this little 80s ladies wrestling thing. So, that was fun. Um, What else? Oh, craft fair season has begun. So, I'm sure all of you, as I am, are starting to think about shows. Those that do them. I am. I've I've booked three so far this month. I've told myself this year that I was going to chill out on shows and find some other things to do. Um... But I'm a crazy person, and I do a lot of things, so we'll see how that works out. Um, yeah, I'm going to be in Ohio a lot this month. Uh, Cleveland Flea, Crafting Outlaws, and Crafty Supermarket. And actually, if you want to know more about that show, head on over to episode number one, where I interview Miss Grace Dubush, who is one of the uh, ladies that helped start that guy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start with more Emily now and, uh, play the show. Enjoy. On today's episode, I talk with Kristen Drzowski. Kristen is a designer, illustrator, and creative badass behind Worthwhile Paper. We chat about her experience with starting her business and managing balance in life and business. I hope that you guys enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed talking to Kristen. So thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so Kristen, just to get started off, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where did you grow up and where did you go to school? Um, so I grew up in Canton, Michigan, and I went to um, college at Eastern Michigan University, which is in Ypsilanti, which is where I live now. I live mm-hmm. like very close to EMU. So, um, so yeah, so I um, am the owner and designer of behind Worthwhile Paper, Mm -hmm. and we make lively screen-printed paper goods, including greeting cards and notebooks and art prints, Um, and we, uh, I don't know, what else about me? So you went to Eastern. Um, Did you, um, did you take art, did you go to art school? I did. At there? Yeah. So it was like um, a fine art major with a concentration in graphic design. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so I took like a lot of graphic design classes, but with a lot of like other, just like fine art classes mixed in, Mm -hmm. which I really liked the program there. It was awesome. Like I've, I've like looked at other art programs too. And like, I feel like a lot of, there was like so many good options in the area, but I was like really happy that I ended up at Eastern, even though originally I wasn't sure like, Oh, is this going to be good or not? And then like, I was like, so like amazed, like the professors there are like really great. I've heard a really, like a lot of good things about the program at Eastern yeah and like everyone that I know that's doing something (laughs) like with the graphic design most of the people graduated from Eastern oh that's that's awesome yeah I feel like they're doing like some really great things yeah I always see like I mean it might be too because like I hung out here quite a bit and I knew just yeah yeah I feel like it's like Eastern and I mean what else who like what other 
program is there in the area, I guess, like college? Just I mean, you have creative and studies. CSS, yeah. Or yeah. CCS. CCS, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always get that. They're like, oh, you're from Detroit? Did you go to CCS? I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> yeah, like, just assume. No. No, too no. expensive. <laughs> Wayne State. I went to the really ghetto school. Oh, yeah, Wayne State. They had a yeah. program there, right? Uh, uh, I don't know if I'd call it that. But <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so did you... Um, so what about your family? Did you come from a creative family? Um... Not really. No. no. My dad is, like, an engineer, so he has some, like, drawing skills mm-hmm. and stuff. And I remember when I was little, he could draw, like, block letters really good. And I remember being like, how did you do that? And, yeah. like, so he's, like, really good. He's, like, you know, but my mom was a stay-at-home mom mostly, and she would, like, laugh if I, if I like, told her that one of her drawings was good. Like, she thinks her drawings are, like, terrible. And we would play Pictionary, uh-huh. and she would just be like, I'm so bad at drawing. So, like, <laughs> not really, I feel like. Uh-huh. I can't really think of, yeah. But my both my brother and I are both in, like, artistic fields, sort of. So I'm, like, doing this, and he's doing music therapy. Oh. So my parents were just like, what? How did that happen? Like, yeah. <laughs> so were they great. supportive of you going to school for art? They were, yeah. I mean, I think they originally wanted me to take, like, more business classes and stuff like mm-hmm. that so I could, like, learn how to do something with it, and I, which I didn't take but ended up doing something businessy, I guess, learning it myself anyway. Um, but, no, they were supportive. They were like, this is what you want to do. This is what makes yeah. you happy. So, like, let's do it. Sure, of course. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, and they're really supportive of my brother, too. So, yeah, it's been, like, yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um. So... You had a concentration in graphic design, and now you're doing mostly silk screening, right? Yeah, so I actually started screen printing in college because mm-hmm. the program there, I mean, you could do a lot of different things there, but one of the professors I had um, was, like, really into screen printing, so I took up an interest in it because I, like, just loved it so much, mm-hmm. and I started screen printing um posters for the art shows there like so they didn't have this intern like this was like this little internship that I got was like working with the gallery director to come up with like graphic design materials like printed materials for the shows and this was kind of like my first go at screen printing and I insisted on screen printing the posters I don't know if everybody screen printed them like after Mm -hmm. like I left but I was like I want to screen print these and it was like so fun and I remember like you know staying up at the studio and like just printing all night, like, coming home, like, so tired and, like, but it was so fun, like, I loved it, and so that was kind of my first, my first go at that, um, but, yeah, so between, like, design and screen printing, like, from college and just, like, experience and playing around with my own stuff, I guess is kind of, like, a combination of those two things. Yeah. Has, like, really stuck with me. Um, so how did you get started and what you're doing now okay so it's kind of like a domino effect I guess it's like I've been thinking about this for a while like someone's like how did you start I'm like how far back do you want me to go yeah (laughs) but I guess I'll start like at college um so I was doing all this screen printing for posters for the shows and I guess so what really happened was I started going to the ugly mug to post up these posters and then um the guy who worked there Eric was like, can you design a t-shirt for us? Mm -hmm. I was like, sure. It was like my first, like, my first custom job that I'd, like, ever done as, like, a freelancer. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And, like, I totally thought they would hate it, and they, like, ended up loving it. It was, like, unicorns with, like, lightning bolts, and, like, so it was really (laughs) fun. And, like, so I was going to screen print them myself, but Uh I'd never done t-shirts before. And so I knew a guy who worked at BG Kids, and he helped me screen print like a batch of them for the ugly mug like off hours which is just funny because like that's what I'm doing now like that's what Steve and I do now we like Mm -hmm. print things off hours at VG Kids so like really like it's funny how it started like like with just like you know with the whole screen printing thing but anyway so I fell in love with VG Kids and like wanted to work there for so long like it was there was like a year that went by that I just kept like bugging my friend Nate that was like please give me a job there could you tell the guy about me like can I can I have an interview could we like like, I want to apply. Are there any open positions? Like, uh-huh. all the time. And then finally, he was, like, leaving and was, like, okay, I gave your, like, name to the owner. And, like, I ended up setting up an interview. 
and I started working in the art department there. Mm -hmm. And, like, the art department at VG Kids is basically this awesome group of people who sit in a room and make jokes all day, but also work very hard on um, preparing artwork for the jobs that come in. So people Mm -hmm. will send us, like, would send us, I don't work there anymore, obviously, (laughs) would send, Uh well, they do now, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) So we get sent, like, a JPEG, Mm -hmm. or maybe it's a workable file if it's, like, a designer who knows what they're doing. Um, And our job is to, like, do the color separations Mm -hmm. and make it screen printable because the screen printing, you print, you know, every individual color on its own layer. Um, So it was, like, a lot of fun. I got so much experience in, like, just how to set up artwork for screen printing, Um, like, making layouts and just using it overall just like the overall knowledge of like how ink is going to like what color ink is going to look a certain way like on certain papers and mm-hmm. like all this stuff and so you know I was constantly surrounded by screen printing yeah. all day which is like my favorite thing um and I originally got hired to be like a in-house designer uh-huh. and it just kind of translated into like a guy was leaving the art department and then James, the owner, was like, hey, do you want to work here and do this job? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, it yeah. paid more. And it was like, so, uh, but I was still doing some design work there. Like, if somebody had a design request, um, it would come in and, you know, I would maybe, like, work on it. Uh-huh. I mean, it wasn't anything, like, it wasn't anything really crazy. I got to design a couple of really cool band t-shirts one time, and that was fun. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but a lot of the times, I was like, we want a t-shirt design. Can you uh-huh. do this? And, like, so, um, yeah, that was super fun for a while. And then... Um, we had this idea to start a design team, like collective type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and this was between like James and another dude, Zach and me, and we were like going to start this design studio and it kind of like didn't really go anywhere. Is that the war paint? That was war paint. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So war paint was this thing that was like, it was just like this ever changing blob. Like Mm -hmm. it was going to just be whatever I wanted it to be at that point because James moved away and Zach kind of signed off. So I was just kind of like, oh, I could either do this or I could not do this. Uh And like, obviously I did it. I was like, I'm just going to like, I emailed him. I was like, can I do this anyway? Like, can I just start a thing? And so the goal of War Paint Studio was to be like a design collective at VG Kids that included like all of the people who worked there that were doing something creative. Mm Mm-hmm. Or, like, who were designers. Mm -hmm. So I was, like, very, very enthusiastic about it. But it's, like, really hard when you're trying to, like, create, like, this group thing. And, like, you're really enthusiastic and you want it to be this certain way. And you're, like, trying really hard to, like, loop other people in. And they're just, like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Yeah, I'll do that. And it's just kind of, like, oh, okay. So, like, are we doing this or, like, not? Or, like, what are we doing? (laughs) So I kind of – so Steve, actually – this was before Steve and I were dating or married. Like, we we were just, like, friends. Actually, we worked there at VG Kids together for, like – probably a year without even really knowing each other at all. Like, because he worked, he was green printing Mm t-shirts. Like, he was the head shirt printer at that point. And I was in the art department. So we're, like, at separate spaces. We didn't even really know each other at that point. But at some point, we started, like, collaborating on gig poster designs. Uh And that was kind of, like, what happened with War Paint was, like, okay, we're making these poster designs now. So we're, like, Steve and I making some gig posters. And we had, like, other, you know... Anyone else at VG Kids who, like, wanted to design a poster w- through the name War Paint, like, obviously was welcome to, and they mm-hmm. did. It was really cool. Um, our friend Matt Dye was making posters, and Sean was making posters, too. So, um, and they still work at VG Kids. Um, so, but Steve really took up, like, the most interest in, like, like making stuff, and he always mm-hmm. kind of, like, encouraged me to just, like, make stuff, and he was going to help me print it, and I was like, oh, cool, like, thanks. And so we ended up just collaborating a lot. Um and so we started making, I started making other projects too that weren't just gig posters. Like right. I have these fruits and vegetables posters that are like all the fruits with the names underneath and all the vegetables. Uh-huh. And I, I made that just as like a thing that was like, oh, this isn't a gig poster, but it's another kind of poster. And I yeah. like it. So I yeah. made it. And like there were some other like kind of like more cons- like fun, non-band related posters that I started making. And we took... We took these posters to Flatstock, which is a, um, it's like a, it's like a craft fair type thing, but for only for gig poster designers. Mm-hmm. And so you go in and there's just like all these awesome designers, like really, really 
good designers. And yeah. you're like, holy shit, I am such a loser compared to, like, these guys. <laughs> like, oh, my God, these guys are so good. Like, these designs are, like, amazing. So I felt like I felt like the underdog in that scene for sure. But what I realized was when I went to those events and when we started going to Dipsy was that people were more drawn to my non-gig poster work than my mm-hmm. gig poster work. And so I started making... Um, like, the first time I went at Dipsy, which I think is when we met, like, the summer Dipsy at Riverside Park or Front Yes. Like, and I was like, I hear you like Carl Sagan, too. I yes, like Carl Sagan, and too. Traded, <laughs> yeah. And I traded you, I, I think I traded you it was a magnet. magnet for one of your Carl Sagan quote prints. Yeah, I have it framed in my house. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. So funny. I, like, yeah, I just remember that. I totally forgot about that, too. I know, right? <laughs> the funniest thing was I was, like... Somebody, it was like one of, it was maybe Marcy or someone else, and she was like, someone was like, oh, you have this Carl Sagan print, you should go check out this girl, she has Carl Sagan stuff too. And so they pointed in a direction, I just went in that direction, Uh and I came across like some other girl, and I was like, I hear you like Carl Sagan, and she's like, uh, I don't know, this, I'm the right person. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my god, like, who else could that be? And I, like, looked around, and I see, like, your table, and I'm like, it's gotta be that girl. Like, it's gotta be that girl. <laughs> like, any dorky science thing you can yeah, imagine. Like, I mean, if it's not this girl, then it's, like, nobody, so. <laughs> but anyway. Anyways, so I started making, like, greeting cards on this, like, on the sides of my posters, like, uh-huh. like if I was making an 11 by 14 poster or like an 18 by 24 poster and we used a big enough screen and I had a big enough sheet of paper, I would add um, cards or like little things on the side uh-huh. to like maximize the use of the screen and then you get like extra goodies when you cut it. Um, and so I found that like people at Dipsy were like, like they were selling pretty well and I was like, oh, yeah. like maybe... Maybe cards are, like, a fun thing or, like, maybe, like, I make more smaller art prints and I kind of was, like, moving away from gig posters. And then at that time, I had gotten a job at Rock, Paper, Scissors doing wedding invitations. Is that a... So Rock, Paper, Scissors is, like, a cute, um, awesome, like, a stationery and gift shop in Ann Arbor on Main Street. I've heard about it, but... Yeah, it's awesome. Like, they have so many cards and it's really awesome. So it was a sweet job. I got to make like all sorts of different kinds of wedding invites and I did a lot of hand lettering and marketing stuff Mm -hmm. um for them and yeah it was super fun but anyway I was surrounded by cards all the all the time yeah so I was like oh like this is this is a thing like I Mm -hmm. could actually make cards and like people will buy them maybe like I don't know like it seems like a really fun thing so and it seemed so natural to me like I think the first card I made was like you are the best and it was just like on the (laughs) side of the thing and like like just like uh you know positive um I guess, like, affirmations or just positive words or whatever. I was, like, yeah. just, like, you're awesome, sweet, like, this is great. <laughs> like, that's kind of, like, the vibe. Uh-huh. That, um, and so I guess after that was, like, I had this dream that I had my own card line, and it was called Worthwhile Paper. And I woke up, and I was, like, what a dumb name. So you dreamt <laughs> the name of I did. Oh, my gosh, I love that so much. <laughs> so funny because I woke up and I was like oh my god that's the cheesiest name ever like I'm not gonna name it that ha ha dream self and then like through the naming process of like coming up with this brand that was you know different from war paint studio I kind of wanted to create something totally different I was like you know uh-huh. I have this like blob of a business that's not really anything it's just what I feel like doing at any point and it can be whatever or or I could have this like strategic brand where I like really think about what I'm going to do. Uh-huh. Um, and so the process of starting Worthwhile was very like, okay, slow down. Like, don't jump to this. Like, really think about it. Write down your goals. Write down what your brand is going to be like. Write down, like, what types of things you want to make and, like, set limitations for yourself. And, like, you know, whether that be, like, aesthetic limitations or, like, product type or, like, whatever. And so it was, like, this thing that I, like, really took the care, which is, like, super unlike me, Mm -hmm. especially at that time, because I was, like, very, like, fast-paced. Like, everything was always, like, jump, 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 like, do this, do that. And so it was, like, interesting. But anyway, when I was working on figuring out my name, I had all these other names written down, and they all sounded, like, really cute and cool and trendy and (laughs) hip. And then I just came back to Worthwhile, and I was, like, this actually means something to me. Uh Like, this... um, word is like something I use a lot to like 
yeah justify decision making or like just justify life like is this worthwhile or not and like more importantly than is it worthwhile like is it not like yeah like is this worth like like my energy or you Mm -hmm. know what is worth your energy more than you know something else might be and so it comes into like values and like um you know like for me like worthwhile things are like going outside or like going on a big hike and then like getting to the top of the mountain or whatever and you're like that was worth it or like you know doing something hard is like worth the awesomeness in the end um so like you know this word like really meant something to me so I was like I really want to I'm just gonna name it this like I dreamt about it like there's something there I'm going for it and so Uh I named it that's how I named it so what has been the biggest challenge that you have had to overcome creating your business to where you are now um, I think mostly, well, there's a couple of things. I mean, one thing that just jumps to mind is obviously I launched my business like while I was pregnant. So I, you know, had Henry around the same time that I kind of like brought worthwhile into being. So, mm-hmm. um, it's been kind of just challenging, um, you know, trying to be, a good mom and a good business owner at the same time while not Mm -hmm. like sacrificing one or the other too much. Like obviously Henry is like way more important to me. He's like number one important to me, but, um, you know, trying to like, I have like a baby and a business baby at the same time. So the challenging thing at first was really like how to find, like how to find that balance there. Mm -hmm. And so there are like a few things I think I learned. I mean, I'm still learning like every day. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, But, you know, I didn't have, like, a lot of work days when I was with Henry when he was first born. I had one work day, and I was still working at Rock, Paper, Scissors, and I prioritized that, obviously, because it was, Mm -hmm. like, you know, a client, essentially, to, like, with a lot of deadlines. And so I guess, like, that was – that was that has been pretty challenging, but I feel like I've gotten the hang of it over Mm -hmm. the past few – like, you know, two and a half. He's two and a half now um, of just uh, creating a separation between, like – okay, this is work time and, like, this is mom time. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be, like, on my phone all the time when I'm with my son. Like, I need to be present with him. Mm -hmm. And at first it was hard because, you know, he's an infant, so it's not like he knows whether or not I'm paying, like, really, like, if I'm, like, you know, doing something. But it kind of got to the point where, like, so, you know, when you're, like, working on something and you get, like, in the zone and you just want to finish what you're doing? Yeah. So that is something that, like, I've really had to, like, completely just break in half basically yeah because if I so when he was little he would like nap next to me on this little rocker and I'd be like working on my computer and like the moment he wakes up from a nap obviously he starts crying and you can't be like okay just like give me a couple minutes I'm almost done with this (laughs) and then I will attend to your basic infant needs like your very urgent needs that need you know like you need me so you can't just be like hold on one minute oh oh, oh, just give me a few and like I'm almost done mommy needs her (laughs) mommy needs her her business time hold on baby (laughs) no literally it's like drop the mouse get up forget if you're even if I'm in like the middle of a sentence I'm writing an email I just like I forget about it Uh you can't I mean seriously when like a small baby is like crying yeah you can't possibly no. Right? And it's your baby, right? It's like your baby. You're like, oh, I just want to pick you up and hold you. So, you know, make you feel better, um, you know, or nurse or whatever. And so, like, it was just an interesting, like, mental thing to, like, have to be, like, all right, completely cut mm-hmm. off my, like, flow yeah. and, like, completely do something else. And it was, like, mm-hmm. very challenging because I'm very, like, oh, I just want to get this done. I just want to get this done. But, you know, it was, like, really mm-hmm. – it's insane. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. So how, like, with – how does time management change for you with work, like with running a business and having a family? So I started to make like boundaries mm-hmm. and like, I remember at some point he must've been like only like a year old at this point, but I, I mean, I could tell I was like very stressed all the time. I had way too many things going on. Um, so my thing with time management was like, I, I, we got him into daycare when he was 18 months and that like dramatically changed kind of like everything. Cause my mom would watch him one day a week and that was my work time. Mm-hmm. But at that like one day a week is like really hard, Yeah, you know? Um, 
But so my thing now is like, so he goes to school Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and that's like my work day. You know, yeah. that's why like today I can hang out with uh-huh. you. <laughs> like, so this is my work day, and I know that I, you know, obviously can get like, I, this is my time to do work. Right. And then that's my time to like be mom. And I mean, if I get like a really important email that I need to respond to from like a customer or something, I'm obviously going to, mm-hmm. if it's like, a, you know, a Friday or a weekend, mm-hmm. like I'll obviously respond. But um, I can't like, I can't, I can no longer do that thing where I work while he naps. Yeah. Even on the days that I watch him, like Wednesday and Friday, sometimes I try, like I would try, you know, he would be napping and then it's like, I'd be working and like he wakes up and I would have this like honestly like resentment feeling of like oh no just nap longer and like I hated that feeling yeah. I was like why do I feel like that that's so that's so mm-hmm. gross you know like I don't want to feel like that so I'm just like th- at this point like embracing time with him and if he takes a nap I will I will like I will take it well honestly I will take a nap with him yeah like naps are the best thing in the entire world and I don't know why I tried to work while he was napping before like uh-huh. naps are so essential yeah <laughs> like, they're oh, totally. so amazing and like he's getting to the age now where he's gonna stop napping and I'm like what am I going to do yeah. like it's gonna be insane <laughs> <laughs> oh. um yeah but definitely just creating boundaries for sure yeah and it's easier for I mean everyone probably has their own unique situation when they mm-hmm. have a business and a family just depending on like if they have a partner, what their partner does, you know, how their job mm-hmm. is, you know, who can watch, you know, your kid. If you both have, like, full-time jobs, like, they're, it's daycare or some people sacrifice their jobs to be, like, stay-at-home parents, which is, like, that's fine, too. But, yeah. Like, so I'm, I feel, like, really grateful that I can still do, like, something and, you know, be a mom and still mm-hmm. have, still feel like I'm, like, spending a lot of time with yeah. them. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I feel really fortunate in that way. Yeah. That's awesome, too, just, like, that you have that ability. And, I mean, he seems to be, like, pretty, like, on point with the whole, like, time <laughs> management thing. Like, I, I don't have a family, a kid, or anyone. Like, it's just me. And I'm, I wake up in the morning and be like, oh, no, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, no. It's like, it sounds like I have it all together, but some days it's really not, though. Like, yeah. Because, you know, think about it. If I'm with him all the time... Tuesday or you know Monday Tuesday mm-hmm. and Thursday my work days they can also sometimes be like oh I have a house thing I need to do I really need yeah. to clean this I need to do laundry I need to do all this you other need, shit you need like, me time too <laughs> right and me time sometimes like I just need to take a bath like <laughs> and like that's what I'm gonna do like if I you know if that's what I have to do to make like be a good person or uh-huh. like to feel balanced or whatever but yeah, and sometimes, yeah, like we were just talking about how, like, feeling guilty for not, like, spending all of my free time working, mm-hmm. but it's, like, self-care is, like, so important to be, like, you'll do a lot, you'll do a lot better if you take care of yourself, like, yeah. if you go all day without eating lunch, like, you're just going to be so unproductive in the last, like, f- three hours of the day. Oh, totally. But if you take, like, an hour to, like, make yourself lunch and, like, actually do it, like, you'll have, like, the best time the next three hours and, like, so yeah. much shit will get done and it's crazy. Yeah, that's, like... Uh, over the past like two years like the whole self-care thing that has been something that I just like threw out the window yeah I'm like I'm just like probably in the past like year I'm just like uh I need to get on back on track with like figuring out how to take care of me because yeah. otherwise I'm gonna go mental <laughs> for real it's yeah it's crazy I was just thinking about how the fact that like self-care was just like not in my vocabulary when mm-hmm. I first had Henry it was all just like go, do the stuff, hustle, all this stuff where people uh-huh. are glorifying, like, ha- being busy. Like, being busy is, like, this yeah. glorifying thing. Like, drink more coffee, do all the stuff. And it's like, no, like, don't drink all the coffee and do all the things. <laughs> like, you should take a nap and, like, <laughs> meditate. Like, <laughs> that is going to fulfill you at a deeper level than, like, putting on your hustle shirt and like spazzing out and like yeah when people say the word hustle I just picture myself like breathing really heavy and like typing on my keyboard like really fast and like frantically running around like 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 the rocky montage scene (laughs) yeah totally it's just like (laughs) like, it's crazy so yeah I mean I think a lot of people have like de-glorified the hustle a little bit and realized that there's some balance there like hustle can be balanced out with some relaxation and like yeah, self-care is totally, like, a popular realization that people are having lately, and I'm, like, really mm-hmm. happy about that, because people need to yeah. chill yeah, out a little totally. bit. Yeah, totally. Just, like, take care of yourself. Because, really, taking care of yourself is, like, so important. It is. In, being, even, in, like, being successful, even, too. Like, yeah. doing anything. 
yeah, and being a, a good person. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like I think it's important. Just like it's it's a challenge in itself. Yeah. But like it also helps you overcome other things too. Just like and how can like as a creative person, how can you be creative? If you're not taking care of yourself, because you're going to have, like, negative creativity or something. Right. Totally. You want your creativity to come from, like, a place of, like... Wholeness. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Like, a truthful place, and rather than just, like, this, like, I need to make a design. Let's do it. Like... Yeah. But, no, it's, like, you know, you want it to come from this, like, true, like, almost spiritual, like, place of, like, this is my creativity. This is what I want to bring into the world. This mm-hmm. is, like, my... Like, you know, spirit is expressed visually or just the things I want to put out into the world rather than just, like, another thing on your to-do list Mm -hmm. that needs to be, like, checked off in a hustle. Totally. (laughs) So, um, what about, have you had to overcome any challenges creatively? Um, yeah. I think, like, you probably have this, too, just as, as, like, a visual artist of just, like, thinking about... I mean, you probably have, you probably have this too, where like, um, so many ideas, so little time. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, yeah, some days I feel like I really love my work and then other times I'm like, ah, it should be more like this or like maybe I, this is not like truthfully like how I could have done that or Mm -hmm. whatever. I guess like the most challenging, like creative aspect is just like, I don't know, we're all victims of like comparison and oh absolutely yeah. and you know what here's the thing okay now I know what I want to say because <laughs> now that now what comes to mind is like not just comparison but um like wanting to make things that are unique and not like something not like everything else mm-hmm. and it's like I feel like it's obvious to see what's trending especially when you're just like submerged in your own like marketplace of similar types of work sort of yeah and you know it's it's really easy to see how some people are making a lot of the same types of things and I mean some of the things in my work are kind of trendy I mean but I don't own them like I don't own plants and I don't own the moon and I don't own positivity like and you can't copyright those things and it's like but it's like I want to feel sometimes I feel like I just really want to make things that are different, Mm -hmm. but still, like, resonate with people in a way, you know, but not, like, follow trends too closely. Yeah, I totally, I totally know exactly what you're talking about. Actually, like, this has been something that I've been thinking about now for, like, probably the past couple months. It's just, and I think it actually came from a conversation that you and I had when we went out to dinner. Maybe, And yeah. we were talking about, like, trends and, like, how there are actual people that set trends. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking about how just having a business and having to be online a lot and then you'll go on, like, Pinterest or just, like, on Etsy and see what other people are making and, like... Maybe not even consciously you're doing this, but you might see something and then like a month down the road that will like resonate with you and then you might start to make something and then it will be like, you know, like too similar to something that you might have saw. Yeah, totally. You know, and then like you'll go and like, oh, I can't really make that. Right. But so I've been thinking a lot about this and how growing up, right, like we grew up in a time where like in middle school and probably high school like you didn't go home every day and get online and like stay online all the time like we're everyone's so connected now um anyways I was just thinking about like how how different it must be for people growing up now and like right everyone's so connected being so inundated with like all of this information yeah and like wanting to step back away from that and be like I want to read one magazine this week and get no other information out and just be inspired by that. Yeah. And just, like, do what you want to do. Right. That's crazy because, yeah, I've often thought about that whole process, too, um, with just how much there is to look at. And obviously you want to know what other people are making a little bit. Uh You know, it's, it's okay to, like, know what other people are making. But instead of wanting to make something that looks like what other people are making, mm-hmm. we should be trying to know what other people are making so that we 
don't make something that looks like that. Yeah. Because what's the point? The world doesn't need more of that. Uh huh. Like the world doesn't need like more pineapples right now. Like there's enough of that. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> we can make something different now. Uh-huh. So it's like, yeah. But I do know what you're talking about with the whole the fear of subconsciously being inspired by something that you're not even intending mm-hmm. because you may have scrolled past it one day on Instagram and not even and then you it uh-huh. comes up later and you think your mind tells you it's an original idea but like there's that fear of like is it though or did I see that somewhere yeah you know? and it's like but what I do and I'm sure you do this too before you make any before I make any design I like if I have like a clever idea or something I want to make sure that no one else has made it so I will like google the shit out of it oh you know like yeah. I'll be like all right like this is the card I want to make this is the phrase I'm googling the phrase uh-huh. I don't see anything on here I looked on Etsy you know like then I think it's good to make yeah right um, yeah, that's like it's like a good exercise. Uh-huh. Just to like let's double check here that this is an original idea and not oh, something I saw somewhere. <laughs> totally. Well, that's Just like case. <laughs> I I did I well I usually don't come up with like phrases not so much. I did this last Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, because I was like, oh, I want to use Bay. Like, yeah, so everyone's saying Bay, and I was like, oh Bay be mine I was like oh my god that's hilarious and I like googled it and I was like I can't be the only one that came up with this I could not find it anywhere oh and I was like gosh. using it <laughs> like yeah oh my god you know I've, I've come up with some things too that I'm just like this really doesn't exist already yeah. oh my god like this is amazing <laughs> yeah and it's feeling. like it's so funny though too because like that is something that like only like card people can like <laughs> oh, yeah. understand totally or like just like print people like they're like oh no, like what yeah. do you mean like you guys are just like sitting there trying to come up with like weird sayings <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah oh it's oh. so much fun though it really is well something I realized is that you can't copyright your vibe either though like you can't you can't like you can't like say that someone copied you either like have you ever saw something that maybe kind of looked like something that you did but you're like oh well it's definitely not close enough to be like they didn't copy me but it just looks close but it like still makes you feel Mm -hmm. weird but you're like well like it's not exact so I can't really well yeah say anything you can't copyright like a plant or, right, or like, like your interests uh-huh your inspirations or right your, or like a shape because like right? I mean even like jewelry makers for example like oh yeah you know there's so many people that have stuff that's like so similar and like if you're like making a triangle or like you know it's just like you can't copyright a shape like, right <laughs> like everyone yeah definitely can't copyright a triangle yeah I think unless somebody actually like traces your design or like does the same layout with like Mm -hmm. similar colors or like a similar phrase then I don't think like I don't think it's valid yeah but I don't know I guess my creativity challenge is just like wanting to know that I'm making stuff that is like based on like my true expression and not so much of like what do I think people will buy or whatever Uh uh-huh so I've been doing like this thing where I like I will like I will like imagine myself like would I give this card to somebody Mm -hmm. like would I would I use this in my own life like is this something I want or is this just like something I want to design like because I think it will sell and it's really not so much about that as it is like would I want to use this Mm -hmm. no I really like that because that's how I think too it's just like would I yeah like I don't like to make things that I don't like right yeah me either which sometimes gets I don't, do you do custom work? I don't really do a lot of custom work right now. Okay. So, like, with, like, every once in a while, I'll get somebody that will, like, want a logo or, like, something, which is weird because it's, like, I do really, like, doodly stuff. So, I'm, like, why do you want your You're logo like, you to sure? be, like, doodly? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, to me, like, a lot of the times they'll, like, change it so much that I'm, like, I don't really like this. Like, right. It's, like, no and longer you're, like, they're, like, oh, I love it. I'm just, like, oh, don't tell anyone that I made. <laughs> yeah totally I had that experience I used to do custom work uh-huh. a lot um but I kind of like one day I decided that I had way too many like channels mm-hmm. on too many tabs open in my yeah. brain yeah and I was like I need to pick one thing and so it's going to be my favorite thing and I'm just going to not do anything else but that thing and see what happens when I devote all my energy toward that one thing just because, and it doesn't have to be like that for everybody, but mm-hmm. I'm not everybody. I have three, I have only three days a week where I can work, 
and that it, you know, that is my thing. So I have to put all my energy towards one yeah. thing or else I'm going to be stressed. Yeah. So it's really just a stress thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I might t- take up custom work, you know, again in the future. Maybe mm-hmm. when I, when Henry goes to school full time or something, but mm-hmm. you know, for now I just chose like one thing. But I know what you're talking about when you're like, oh yeah, like when you're just getting hired to be a designer and not getting hired for your particular style, that can yeah. be like pretty overwhelming because then, then you're not really, it's not your work. Mm-hmm. There's a different feeling of somebody like requesting something very specifically be designed and somebody being like, I love your work. I want you to make my logo and like. Almost to the point where it's like they don't even care what yeah. the, the details are because they trust your style mm-hmm. so much that they know that they can, like, expect something from you. Like, they know what to expect from you. Yeah. So I think being, like, I think that type of client-maker relationship is, like, so fun. Like, I've made a few logos for people or done some projects for people where it's just been, like, I really like this thing you made. Like, can you make this something kind of like that or, like, mm-hmm. in this style? And, like, they know what to expect because they can see what I've made before and it's, like... Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, and give you, like, creative freedom. Right, creative like, freedom. That's that's what custom work sometimes just bums me out and it yeah. like, takes that away. Like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are, yeah, it's really, a, it's really interesting. Um, so what are the, some of the current challenges that you're working through? Current challenges? Ooh, let's think. My current challenge is, well, the space of having so much inventory, Mm -hmm. which I think we maybe talked about that earlier, not on podcast, yeah, yeah. (laughs) of just, so all of my inventory is in a 10 by 10 room in the basement, which I should just show you later. Yeah. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And it's, it's been a, it's been an ongoing challenge where I make, so here's a second challenge in itself is making more things Mm -hmm. and then needing space for those things. Yeah. Because with wholesale, we make a lot of, you know, certain, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of like, larger quantities of things mm-hmm. than if it was just retail because people order, you know, in bulk. So um, just, like, trying to have the space for everything and making it really organized, mm-hmm. that has been... Um, that has been kind of a challenge. But, you know, it's kind of like this work in progress, and we just made, like, a big... We just made a big change yesterday where we had all these bins of CDs in like the corner of our inventory room because when we first we when we first put all my inventory in that room, we were just using half of the room and mm-hmm. now we're using the whole room. Um, and so the challenge is like making new things but not really getting rid of a lot of things. Yeah. It's very hard for me to figure out like how to cap my line because there are some lines out there that are like really big and there's some that are small and I'm like I want my line to be like a very nice size um but like I always love coming up with new ideas Mm -hmm. but then it's really hard to discontinue items and it's not it's like so much like discontinuing it permanently just feels like oh I'm getting rid of this even though it's like we have the file we can make it again later if we want but if there's something there that's like if I'm going to discontinue a card, like, it's just going to be gone and I'm going to make room for new stuff. Yeah. But it's really hard. Like, I tried to do it the other day. Like, okay, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to, like, figure out, like, what cards I'm going to discontinue for, like, my fall, like, fall update or whatever. And I was like, maybe this one. No, I like this one. I should keep this one. It's cute. Like, I don't want to get rid of that one. Or, like, yeah, you know, like, oh, and sometimes it's like, oh, I don't like this design that as much as this, as these other ones, but it sells a lot. So this, mm-hmm. or, like, you know, but... Yeah, I guess it's just, like, figuring out how that kind of thing, that's been kind of a challenge. Do you have a favorite project that you've worked on? Um, well, I just released these succulents and wildflowers prints, which I think you maybe saw at the Valentine Market, Okay, maybe? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if I had them there. Maybe I did. I think I did. I think, well, you post them online. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have um, the art prints that I make. Some of them are like quotes and positivity, but there's some like I have this whole series of things that are like um, kind of like cataloging different things. So like the fruits and vegetables that I mentioned earlier was like an example, and then so I have like the healing herbs poster that has like you know it's like an illustration with a name of something under it, just like mm-hmm. a little catalog. And so my favorite projects are those because it requires a lot of research. Like I was doing this, so I. I just released these succulents and cacti print and a a, um, wildflowers of North America print. And I don't know all of those things at the top of my head. So I 
you know, with the succulents one, a lot of the drawings that I made were succulents, like, from my house. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know all the names of them. Like, I only know a few. And so Googling things and researching them and looking up the names and looking at pictures of things and drawing them and piecing them all together and just, like, kind of, like, making sure it's accurate, too, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm just being like, is this a succulent? Mm -hmm. Or, like, what's the name of this? What's the scientific name? Like, is this, you know is this wildflower, does it grow in America? You know, like, yeah. what colors does it come in? Like, what colors could I potentially make this? Like, and I end up learning so much from, like, just doing those. I think you probably have, like, oh, a similar thing with your, like, collections totally. and stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, it's, like, just the same type of thing. Researching and cataloging everything. Yeah, and then it's like, a learning totally. process. You learn something in the process mm -hmm. of it, right? And then yeah. you can, like, tell people about it at, like, craft shows. Yeah. And be like, yeah, did you know that, like, this succulent, like, if you pop off a leaf, like, you can turn it into a new one or like this one has fuzzies on it or like you know like yeah this is where this cactus grows like now I know all these fun facts about yeah, my stuff. I think that's like the interesting thing about being an illustrator too is that like you actually do have to do research for things and so y you never stop learning like in, in a right. sense of like actual like learning things that you don't really need to learn <laughs> right right like what color does you know zinnias come in it's like yeah oh, yellow and orange and then pink and you can do whatever yeah. uh -huh. there we go yeah. i didn't know that but now i do yeah i, I didn't like know there was that many screwdrivers in the world yeah like, just different <laughs> types just like oh okay right totally <laughs> different tools and stuff yeah um that's fun oh that's yeah like i love <laughs> I love the learning process of all that. Yeah. Um, so do you have any big plans for the upcoming year? Big plans? Not so much, to be honest. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure yet what summer shows I want to apply to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Renegade would be considered a big plan, but I, I've thought about going to that in Chicago. Other than that, I... Um, I've been, like, thinking about going to trade show again, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I'm going to do that this year. I think I'm going to strategically wait until Henry is in school full-time mm -hmm. because the work that goes into building out a booth and just preparing for a trade show is just seems like it seems like it's so much. Yeah. And what trade show? I would love to go to the National Stationery Show. Yeah. That one I wanted to go. Like, before, when I started my business, that was like, where do you see yourself in five years? I was like, I want to take my line to the stationery show. You know, like, that's totally, like, everybody who's doing paper goods, like, yeah. probably knows about the stationery show and, like, wants to go to it. Um, and I went to a trade show a couple years ago with Etsy. It was New York Now. It was an amazing experience. But um, I didn't have, I didn't, like, have to build my own booth for that. Yeah, And so this isn't really a this year plan, but in a few years or a couple of years, I would like, I think that would be like my big, like next step for my business is mm -hmm. to do, like have my own booth at a trade show. But it's like you have to build your whole thing. Yeah. So it's like a 10 by 10 space and you have like wood, like walls and, and I've always told myself like, if I'm going to go, I'm going to like, I'm going to bring it. Like I'm going to do it the way I want to do it yeah I'm not just gonna like half-ass it just to be there like yeah. I want to really be like this is my brand here it is mm -hmm. like I you know I don't I'm not just I don't want to just like yeah like I don't yeah I'm not gonna half-ass it I'm gonna like really work on it yeah and so no, I totally I totally feel you on that one especially with like setting up a booth because I've definitely thought about doing that show yeah before. totally and I've been invited to go to the New York Now show with, like, other people from Detroit. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I, there's something There's something that I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm ready yet or something. Yeah, I feel the same way, too. It's just like... But then I've also heard, like, people that have done it and, like, they're like, eh, it really wasn't worth the money. Yeah, I've heard that, too. Uh -huh. I've heard of some people going and not getting a sale, but I've heard of some people going and it's crazy. And I yeah. also think that there is a, an entire market of people who like only go to trade shows that's true or like primarily go to trade mm -hmm. shows and so I have this fear that like if I go I'm gonna it's gonna it'll be cool I may get some new buyers mm -hmm. but are they gonna continue to buy from me if I don't go the next year yeah you know yeah is like somebody going to buy your things 
this, they're going to want to buy your things the same way they made their first order. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. Because, like, Etsy Wholesale and um, just, like, word of mouth and sp- Well, yeah, like how has Etsy stuff. Wholesale been for you? Etsy Wholesale has been great for us. Uh-huh. Like, I would say, like, 75% of our wholesale comes from Etsy mm-hmm. Wholesale. And, that, and, like, it makes up a like most of our business like really yeah. like just the wholesale end of things mm-hmm. just because you know it's just it's larger orders it's half the price but it's larger orders so it ends up being actually like more profitable but it's and it's so fun like yeah but Etsy wholesale has been great I love it because it's like we're on there we have our line sheet and buyers get to you know who are looking to stock items from like you know, independent makers will go uh-huh. on Etsy Wholesale and, like, it's, like, a trusted kind of... It's, like, a vetted thing where mm-hmm. you have to apply. Buyers have to apply. So you know that the buyers that are buying stuff from you on Etsy Wholesale have, like, gone through the vetting process, too. And they're mm-hmm. not, like, not just, like, anyone who's anyone could just go on and, like, p- place a bulk order, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of nice. And I feel like we formed a lot of, like, really good relationships. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, there have been some shops that have, like, a lot of shops that order from Etsy Wholesale that I just, like love so much like this shop is so cool and I wouldn't have even known about Mm -hmm. them if it wasn't for this so so if you could go back in time and give yourself advice what advice would you give yourself Ooh, that's a fun question um let's see if I could go back in time and give myself advice um I think I don't know I feel like I would tell myself to well yeah so knowing what I know now I feel like I would go back in time to when I was first starting and I should have first of all given myself a maternity leave second of all (laughs) I think I would just tell myself to like slow down everything's gonna be okay like you don't have to to, like freak out about Mm -hmm. because I was very like you know before I was very like uh fast paced and just like anxious a lot and so I think with you know with the being like you know making things and having a business I think I would just tell myself to like take it one step at a time yeah because that's really what I feel like now is like it's so easy to like when you're starting out to feel like intimidated like like oh there's so many things that I have to do and I still feel that way like oh there's so many like things I could be doing or like things I should do and like a lot of aspirations and a lot of like goals and stuff but I feel like now like it's okay like it's a step-by-step process Mm -hmm. and like um (laughs) yeah it's just like uh I think I would tell myself that to just take it one step at a time because there's no sense in like rushing and like you know the joy is in the journey and not so Mm -hmm. much like achieving a goal but getting like the act of getting there is is like the fun part Mm mm-hmm that's what I would tell myself yeah do you have like a process that you go through like creatively when you're working yes like like specific to you do you think specific uh like 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 when you're coming up with new ideas and like working through just because so I'm asking because your office is like so organized and clean and like literally (laughs) I'll, have to, I'll send you a picture. That My entire wall is just all post-it notes of oh, things really? that, like, to do, to draw, to whatever. <laughs> oh, I have that, but it's, like, on my phone in, like, my notes section. Oh, okay. I have, like, a ton of ideas. Like, I'm always – and I have a spreadsheet, too, where I'm just, like, ideas. It's just, like, oh, every time I come up with an mm-hmm. idea, I'm just, like, type it in. Like, I've actually, like – if you, if you were to, like, tell, like, my mom, like, oh, Kristen is so organized, she would laugh in your face. She'd be like, Kristen is not organized. She's yeah. a mess. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> Why would you even say that? But I've got, like, lately, a lot of people have been like, wow, you're really organized. And I'm like, am I? Like, I feel like throughout the process of, the couple, of a couple of years, I have, like, forced myself to become, like, very, very organized mm-hmm. because I think it was, like, some kind of, like, combat to having anxiety. It was just, like, if everything is organized, then, like, I have, like, like, my brain space is, like, less cluttered, I Mm -hmm. guess. So, I don't know. When I, to answer your question, though, when I come up up with new ideas, I think what really happens is I will think of an idea for so long before it actually, like, happens, Mm -hmm. which I'm sure you're the same way with your post-it notes. You come up with an idea, and you're like, well, what am I going to make today? You know, like, let's look at these post-it notes. (laughs) But, like, that's kind of how my brain is, too, though. It's like, I will have an idea, and then, like, 
for the future. Like, I think I've been, like, planning, like, fall and winter since, like, this past fall and winter. Like, yeah. fall and winter for next year. Yeah. Which is, like, what you have to kind of do in, like, the holiday-based stationery industry. But I will, I will think of ideas for a while, and then I will, like, put them all into, like, I will just start working on them. Like, I'll have an idea phase where I'm, like, all right, here's, like, my, my next collection is going to have this, this, and this. I need, like, another card that is in this category. Or, like, I had this really good idea for a card. I think it's time to make that one now. Like, <laughs> you know, like, some of them are random. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that needs to be a card, you know? And, or, like, you know, this needs to be a new print, or I have this new inspiration. And then I will, um, like, start the drawing process or, like, my thumbnail sketches are always, like, just so bad. Like, mm-hmm. they're just scribbles of, like, oh, and I'll write something so quick because I don't need to, like, make it all detailed yet. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, here's what it's going to look like. Here's, like, the general thing. Like, if I showed you, like, a picture of it, like, you would just, like, be like, oh, that's hilarious. Like, it looks terrible. But, um, and then I'll make a lot of the drawings and then I guess, like, color schemes is, like, a whole other, like, a whole other thing. Yeah. But, um Usually in collections, I like to have, like, some color schemes that, like, match up a little bit or, like, mm-hmm. things that look nice together, but also blend in with other stuff. Um, but yeah, is that answered? Yeah. No, yeah. no. Like, that's – it's it's really interesting to see how other people work. Just yeah. Because, like, you're always, like, in your own space, especially, like, as a creative person that works from home. Yeah. Like, which is, to me, like, that's a, a whole another challenge on its, oh, on its it, own. Yeah, totally. It's working from home. And, like, you know, like, even, like, used to being in, like, a place where, like, you can talk to other creatives, like, when you worked at VG Kids. Yeah. Or the card shop. Like, at least, like, you're around other people to, like, get out that way. When you work at home, it's just like, uh. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I have two assistants helping me now. Oh, that's awesome. They have the joy of me, like, running downstairs and being like, what do you guys think of this idea? Like, would you buy this? Or, like, should it be this way or this way? And then I'm always just like, I just need need a second opinion. Like, Mm -hmm. what do you think? Like, and I think it's kind of, like, a fun... It's like a, it definitely is better when you have like someone to talk to you about it. Yeah. Like, and now it doesn't have to always be Steve. Yeah. Um, you know, cause I feel like I'll always be talking to ideas with him and what he hears is like, okay, this is what I have to print next because Steve does all the printing and I do all the design. Uh huh. So I want that to be in the podcast because like, I don't do the printing all by myself. Yeah. I don't want people to think like, oh my gosh, she works at home and like she, they screen print every like she screen prints everything herself. Like. So I do all the design, and Steve does, like, all the printing because he's, like, technically logged enough printing hours to be, like, a master printer. Like, Uh I think, like, he's far surpassed, like, the amount of hours that you have to practice something to be, like, a master at it. Like, he's so, like, he's, like, so good at at his job and, like, um, really, like, awesome at printing. So he's, like you know, half the reason why our stuff can be, like, mm-hmm. it can work, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, working at home is pretty challenging, though. But it, And it's definitely it's definitely better when you have, like, someone to, even if it's just, like, your friend, just, like, what do you think? Should it be this color or this color? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, just having someone to bounce off ideas off of, too. Yeah. Like, I'll leave, totally. my, I'll leave my instant messenger open. Like, the old school instant messenger <laughs> open because I still have, like, two or three people that I talk to oh, on really? it still. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> like, to the Mac. Like, the one yeah. that, you know. And like yeah. I, So, I still have, like, a couple people that I still talk to on it. And I'll just be, like. What do you think? Just, like, like uh, I don't. I haven't even seen you in, like, tiny years but here what do you think about this because this is what I'm doing now I'm like Jody just <laughs> oh my god that's so funny yeah it's... no it's really hard to just be by yourself and like make decisions yeah like, yeah sometimes it's like should it be on this paper or should it be on this paper like mm-hmm. this pattern or this pattern or... yeah yeah it's yeah. hard it's totally <laughs> so as somebody that has grown a creative business what advice would you give to those out there that are just starting off Advice that I would give to those starting off, um, I would say to like not compare yourself to others, which is like just something that you should just always remember because comparison is like just, yeah, the thief of joy. Like it really is. Like it's just, it's like, 
you're like you're at one point on your journey someone else might be at a completely different point you can't like compare yourself to someone who's like compl- on a completely different you know point in time mm-hmm. and I feel like that's something that I've had to tell myself was like oh don't compare yourself to like this person like they've been doing this for so long and like why would you why would you be on the same level you know yeah like embrace where you are right now instead of like always wanting to be like somewhere else somewhere else yeah yeah um, and I guess also, like, make if, you know, on, on a similar creative, like, for people who are, like, on a path of, like, coming up with a creative business, to, like, be totally true to yourself and don't, like, look at just, like, what you think other people want to buy, but, like, what feels, like, joyous and true for you to make. Like, mm-hmm. it's not so much, like, I think just being yourself and making, like, making things that, like, truly feel, like, like a great expression of yourself is like that's what makes you unique and that's what is also fun for you and I think that like it's almost like no matter what that is the fact Mm -hmm. that it's your true like self and that it's coming from like that place is like gonna make it awesome no matter like kind of what it is yeah yeah just because it has like that like energy in it and it's not like fake Mm -hmm. it's just like this is me like this is how I draw this is how I yeah or whatever yeah, like yeah. part of part of making art is like like giving yourself a little bit. Right, totally. Yeah. Yeah, like this is my like this is what I have to share and like, you know, see mm-hmm. where that takes you. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um Okay. So, are you reading any uh what's your all-time favorite book or is there a book that you're currently reading? Right now I am reading a book. Okay, so like I don't read a lot of fiction books. Um, but I like, I like to read a lot of books just like about things, but the book I'm reading right now is called The Science of Enlightenment Mm -hmm. and it's basically what it sounds like. It's, um, my yoga teacher recommended it to me because I was asked her about how to, um, like deepen a sitting practice, like Mm -hmm. meditation practice. And so she recommended this book and I I don't know, this is what I'm reading right now. So, (laughs) um, I would recommend it. It's, I really like it because it's, it's like he's like has a lot of um, experience with meditation, and he is also a scientist. So it, he like explains things in a way that like like uses a lot of like real life metaphors that uh-huh. you know maybe more sciencey people would understand than like your everyday like me. Like I don't really know a lot of stuff about like biochemistry and like other stuff that he's explaining, but it's like it kind of like it's like an interesting approach because it it's like using science to prove that like mindfulness meditation is actually like something that can improve like someone's like perception of themselves and perception of the world and like Mm -hmm. overall like um happiness and like discovering you know your true self and stuff like that but yeah um it's really interesting I really like to read books about Mm -hmm. like personal practices and stuff (laughs) I do too like it's my entire library really okay that's awesome no you said that like I don't read fiction (laughs) books like oh I've gosh. never read fiction I just would something like my brain says like okay if I'm gonna spend like a week reading a book I want it to be about something that I can learn about yeah like something that's like gonna improve story. your life yeah right yeah. Right. yeah that's so great I'm like so glad sometimes I get really self-conscious when people are like what book ha- like what's your favorite book and I'm like oh you don't even want to know like yeah. it's gonna be so boring to you like <laughs> I know but, like no like I really like reading stuff that's like that like further like develops yourself you have know have you ever like, read any Thich Nhat Hanh books no oh my god okay I'm gonna send you some okay I, I think you'll actually really appreciate them okay. I was like really into meditation for a while oh really like I even went out to the Maharishi school of management and oh like, really and this is when the Maharishi was still alive yeah and oh David Lynch was there teaching like transcendental meditation and Donovan was there <laughs> what was yeah. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. Can you <laughs> they, oh like, my god. hooked up all these like brain things and they had people meditate and like there was a wow a brainologist, I don't know what they're called, like some a neurologist. <laughs> Please don't edit that out. <laughs> A neuroscientist, a neurologist. Yeah, yeah. I was like sitting there, like, 
<laughs> that sounds like an amazing experience. Oh my god, Did you get was... to meet David Lynch. Yeah, it oh was my really god. weird. I also met Donovan too. That's that was awesome. really weird. Like, yeah, call me Bella. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Oh my gosh, I remember like listening to I, like Steve gave me like a Donovan CD, or maybe it wasn't Steve. I think maybe I found it or something, and I uh-huh. like, I was in my car for like a whole summer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was weird. But anyways, like, I got, like, super into meditation, and, um, like, that year, I went to the Maharishi School of Management, and then the following summer, the Dalai Lama actually came to Michigan, and I got to see him speak, and I was just just like, "Ah." Oh my god, that sounds amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'm so happy to meet someone else who, like, doesn't read fiction books, but reads, like, the kind, like, those kind of books. Oh, know? yeah. Like, like meditation, self-help, like, yeah. psychology, or, like, design books. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah, design books. I design. mean, you don't, I don't really read design books, so I just look at, like, I buy picture books. Like, I have these really awesome books over here. They're, like, print and pattern. Yeah. And they're by, I think, Bowie Style is, like, the... Um, I don't know if that's, like, the author or the group. I have that Draplin one. Oh, yeah, that Draplin one is really sweet. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I bought a bunch of these pattern books and type books. Like, I usually buy type books because I'm really into hand lettering, but I just, I, like, went on Amazon one day and was just, like, I'm buying, like, all these pattern books because I got really into patterns. Yeah. I make a lot of simple patterns, but I find, like, just the idea of pattern making so, like, so fun like if I could create another job for myself I would want to make like textile patterns and like wallpaper and stuff yeah you know and you know what there's still time oh my god I know right (laughs) like I feel like I could do that stuff yeah yeah totally yeah so I guess yeah design books are good too so uh anyone that's listening where can they find you and how can they get in touch with you um so my website is where you can find me or on instagram um so it's on Instagram, it's just at worthwhile paper. And then my website is worthwhilepaper.com. Cool. Yay. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much. It yeah. was fun talking. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yay. <laughs> cool. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and that concludes episode number 10. If you'd like to find out more about Kristen, you can head on over to DetroitCraftAcademy.com, where you'll find pictures of her work and links to her site. And for anyone in the Detroit area, you can find Kristen at the Power of the Press Fest happening this weekend. Um, She'll be in Shed 5 of Detroit's Eastern Market, and I will post up links to that show. Anyone that's in the area, it looks like it's going to be really cool, and uh, you should totally go! If you like what you're hearing, show some love by heading on over to iTunes and reviewing the show. And until next week, keep crafting your dreams. Detroit Crafts with Joe D.